Hello and welcome back to Oba Gold after what, two months? I'm your host KG with me is my co-host Forrest. Hello, hello. Welcome back everyone to Oba Gold. For those of you who are just tuning in, we took a two month break after finishing the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, which was a great adventure for everybody involved and we hope that you loved it as much as we did. Right now we're starting a new journey with Star Wars Shadows of the Empire by Steve Perry. All right, we'll start with the prologue. He looks like a walking corpse, Caesar thought, like a mummified body dead a thousand years. Amazingly, he's still alive, much less the most powerful man in the galaxy. He isn't even that old. It is more as if something is slowly eating him. Caesar stood four meters away from the emperor, watching as the man who had long ago been Senator Palpatine moved to stand in the holocam field. He imagined he could smell the decay in the emperor's worn body. Likely that was just some trick of the recycled air, run through dozens of filters to ensure that there is no chance of any poison gas being introduced into it. Filter the life out of it, perhaps, giving it that dead smell. The viewer on the other end of the hollow link would see a close-up of the Emperor's head and shoulders, of an age-ravaged face shrouded in the cowl of his dark, zed-cloth robe. The men on the other end of the transmission, light years away, would not see Caesar, though Caesar would be able to see him. It was a measure of the Emperor's trust that Caesar was allowed to be here while the conversation took place. The men on the other end of the transmission, if he could still be called that. The air swirled inside the Imperial Chamber in front of the Emperor, coalesced and blossomed into the image of a figure down on one knee, a caped humanoid biped dressed in jet black, face hidden under a full helmet and breathing mask. Darth Vader. Vader spoke. What is thy bidding, my master? If oh my god, we switched audio! <laughs> anyway, I continue. If Caesar could have hurled a power bolt through time and space to strike Vader dead, he would have done it without blinking. Wishful thinking. Vader was too powerful to attack directly. There is a great disturbance in the Force. The Emperor said. I have felt it. Vader said. We have a new enemy, Luke Skywalker. Skywalker? That had been Vader's name a long time ago. Who was this person with the same name, someone so powerful as to be worth a conversation between the Emperor and his most loathsome creation? More importantly, why had Caesar's agents not uncovered this before now? Caesar's ire was instant, but cold. No sign of his surprise or anger would show on his imperturbable features. The Falene did not allow their emotions to burst forth as did many of the inferior species. No. The Falene ancestry was not fur, but scales. Not mammalian, but reptilian. Not wild, but coolly calculating. Such was much better. Much safer. Yes, my master. Vader continued. He could destroy us. The Emperor said. Caesar's attention was riveted upon the Emperor, and the holographic image of Vader kneeling on the deck of the ship far away. Here was interesting news indeed. Something the Emperor perceived as a danger to himself? Something the Emperor feared? He's just a boy, Vader said. Obi-Wan can no longer help him. Obi-Wan? That name Caesar knew. He was among the last of the Jedi Knights, a general. But he'd been dead for decades, hadn't he? Apparently, Caesar's information was wrong if Obi-Wan had been helping someone who was still a boy. His agents were going to be sorry. Even as Caesar took in the distant image of Vader and the nearness of the Emperor, even as he was aware of the luxury of the Emperor's private and protected chamber at the core of the giant pyramidal palace, he was also able to make a mental note to himself. Somebody's head would roll for the failure to make him aware of all this. Knowledge is power. Lack of knowledge is weakness. This is something he could not permit. The Emperor continued, the Force is strong with him. The son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi. Son of Skywalker? Vader's son? Amazing. If he could be turned, he would become a powerful ally, Vader said. There was something in Vader's voice when he said this. Something Caesar could not quite put his finger on. Longing? Worry? Hope? Yes. Yes, he would be a great asset, the Emperor said. Can it be done? There is the briefest of pauses. He will join us or die, Master. Caesar felt the smile, though he did not allow it to show any more than he had allowed his anger play. Ah, Vader wanted Skywalker alive. That was what had been in his tone. Yes, he had said that the boy would join them or die, but this latter part was obviously meant only to placate the Emperor. Vader had no intention of killing Skywalker, his own son. 
That was obvious to one as skilled in reading voices as was Caesar. He had not gone to be the Dark Prince, Underlord of the Black Sun, the largest criminal organization in the galaxy, merely on his formidable good looks. Caesar didn't truly understand the Force that sustained the Emperor and made him and Vader so powerful, save to know that it certainly worked somehow. But he did know that it was something the extinct Jedi had supposedly mastered, and now, apparently, this new player had tapped into it. Vader wanted Skywalker alive, had practically promised the Emperor that he would deliver him alive, and converted. This was most interesting. Most interesting indeed. The Emperor finished his communication and turned back to face him. Now, where were we, Prince Caesar? The Dark Prince smiled. He would attend to the business at hand, but he would not forget the name of Luke Skywalker. 